Hello to everyone. I said in a video the other day about what sort of masks are useful and which aren't with surplus masks due to mostly the filters they take and sort of what's still made in terms of filters and a lot of people watch that video compared to normal I spread it to a few sites where people might have been interested and a question I kept getting asked or a lot of people sort of are interested in is what can a gas mask actually protect you against because there's a lot of things that you probably aren't going to survive even if you have a mask um, in reality so what levels do you actually need to protect yourself against so I thought that was a good idea to do a video on sort of explain it a bit more in depth than I could in a comment so with a 40mm gas mask if we just start off with one of those you've got your mask and your mask is mostly going to protect your head it obviously protects your eyes with the um, sort of glass lenses or plastic lenses and it protects your um, respiratory system by filtering the air that comes through, removing any poisons or sort of biological elements from it. So um, military filters are called NBC filters, or they call them CBRN now, it's pretty much the same thing. And that stands for Nuclear Biological Chemical, or CBRN is um, Chemical, Biological, Radiological, Nuclear, but Radiological and Nuclear are pretty much the same things. But it's important to note that obviously a gas mask is not going to protect you from everything. In a really contaminated area, you'd actually want a self-contained breathing apparatus, so there's absolutely nothing coming through that has to be filtered. And there's certain things that, regardless, you can't be protected against. So, for example, nerve gas, which is probably the nastiest of the chemical weapons, that was developed by the Germans during World War II, or just before World War II, and they kept improving it. Now, the irony is Hitler wanted a weapon of mass destruction. Um, Hitler really wanted a nuclear bomb. But he could have pretty much wiped out the world's population with the amount of nerve gas Germany had stockpiled. However, Germany didn't use the nerve gas for, there might be several reasons, but the main one is probably that um, they thought in retaliation from using nerve gas, the Allies would have dropped nerve gas on them as well. The Allies didn't have nerve gas in reality, so it would have meant that Germany could have won the war quite easily by bombing major cities like London with nerve gas. Um, so how nerve gas works is it can kill you very quickly from inhaling it or getting it in your eyes but it can kill you through skin contact and the latest form of nerve gas that we know exists is called VX which is really nasty stuff and VX nerve gas is basically um, if you get I think it's almost like the pin of a needle if you think of a needle and you think of how small the actual tip of the needle is there would be enough nerve gas through skin contact on the tip of a needle to um, kill you within seconds of it touching you or at least send you into shock and you know death later so a mask alone won't protect you from nerve gas you need a full nuclear biological sort of chemical suit NBC suit also there's noddy suits you know that sort of thing chemical suit hazmat suits um, but the practicality of actually putting one of those on is almost impossible so um, what I'm going to do is I'll keep talking about cut to footage from some of my older videos I've done wearing full NBC suits I have a few in my collection um, but in reality they're pretty much useless for a survival situation because unless you have proper testing kits by the time the gas hits you're already dead because you wouldn't know in time to put the suit on and you can't put the suits on quickly they're quite you know it's only pulling on some trousers pulling on the top fastening it all up putting your gloves on making sure the masks on as well making sure there's no gaps between the suit a little tiny gap and nerve gas will get you um, that's not to say having an NBC suit as a civilian is totally useless though because if you have an NBC suit, you can actually use it for a lot of um, purposes that they weren't designed for. Um, I've used it when we've been snowed in before, wearing sort of the waterproof trousers that basically, on the uh, communist uh, sort of Soviet Union, USSR, Warsaw pack suits, you have these leg bits that come all the way up to about your waist. Um, and some of the suits are full body ones, some of the trousers and things separate. But the boots are built on, they're like basically giant waders. So you put them on like wellingtons and the trousers and it's a rubber bit that comes up to your waist sort of area. So if you're wading through flood water or, you know, in deep snow or something, they're really useful. Um, so it's not that chemical suits don't have their uses. It's simply that for a civilian, I don't think you have any chance of getting them on in time, you know, to protect you. Several people have told me as well that in the Gulf War, the soldiers were wearing the NBC suits and masks full stop on the front line just because they wouldn't have had time to have got them on when the alarm sounded without dying or taking massive casualties just because of how little time you would have with nerve gas 
even if it was something more priv primitive like tavern or um, sarin, it's still very, very deadly stuff. The actual chemical amount you need to touch your skin is very, very minor. Anyway, this is an NBC filter on the bottom of a gas mask. NBC filters can be bought as surplus pretty cheaply, and even expired ones will protect you from tear gas, because I think in all reality, tear gas is one of the main things you'll want a mask for. If you think of what you're commonly going to go up against, I don't think nerve gas being dropped on civilians is kind of your biggest worry. If it happens, you're dead, and, you know, it's not that likely to happen, so why buy something to protect you from it? But 40mm, even an expired NBC filter, should give you protection from tear gas. You cannot test them if you've got some in your stockpile, open one, test it against air fresheners. Can you smell it? No, if you can't smell anything, it works against tear gas. Um, and then obviously keep some sealed for use in an emergency against tear gas. So, we know that these work against tear gas. Lots of chemical weapons, probably not when they're expired. Another note is about masks. Once a mask's expired, that doesn't mean it's useless. Basically, the military, or most militaries, use a 10-year shelf life rule for a gas mask. So, say a mask's built in 2000, that mask can be kept in service to 2010, some will have it as 20 years, 15 years, 5 years, whatever. Um, and that point, they're normally sold as surplus. That's not to say the mask doesn't work. The point is that they have rules in place to make sure the troops have good equipment. And because there's risks of parts failing in the masks, they're, you know, sold as surplus after that. It's like a best before date on a food item. There's some food items that will last years and years and years after their best before date. But, you know, for actually selling it, you have to make sure if you're selling it in a shop that it's, you know, within the best before date. Same logic applies that it could be inside the best before date and the food could have gone off. It's, you know, something like that. This mask is dated 1979 and I still know the rubber's intact because it creates an airtight seal with my face and if you put a filter on it, it works. So, there we go. So, what might be more practical for a lot of people is an industrial mask rather than an actual gas mask. So, I actually use this when I volunteer with the Blue Cross against um, sort of pollutants in hay and straw because I have hay fever. This is the 4251. Uh, by 3M, and what you can see of industrial masks is they're colour coded. It's at a really bad angle for the camera to pick up, but 4251 is basically gives you white and brown protection. 4255 again, 4277 has more colours on it, and the 4279 has even more. So, what does that mean? Well, I don't know what every colour stands for, but they're basically different types of gases or irritants that can get inside the mask. So 4251, which I have, is the most standard, and white stands for some sorts of gases, brown stands for others. But if you get a full-on industrial filter, it will be all those colours. So I didn't buy it for use for protection from all those, but you know you can get industrial masks that do that. Some full face, some with the goggles, mask separate like this one. Um, I'll just get this out and show it you. But the idea is quite simple. It's that. You've got obviously a mask that the filter's built on. Some of these have replaceable filters. I would always recommend replaceable filters over non-replaceable ones. But I bought this simply. So when I'm in an environment where there's dust and things that irritate my asthma um, and my hay fever, I can pop the mask on. Pressure check, yeah, it's pressure checked. And obviously I have something that I can breathe through and I won't be irritated by pollutants. So that's another thing to consider if you're getting one of these masks, you don't need necessarily need one for full biological chemical protection. You can get something just to protect you from asthma or hay fever or irritants. And, you know, common industrial uses that you might have with your job. So, that's something like this. It's very simple and works. For protection from those things, one of these filters works just as well. The issue is that it's a lot clunkier having a full one of these on than it is just having one of these. Um, but so, with industrial masks, you can get ones with replaceable filters. Some that you can get the full type gas masks that take 40mm ones, and you get 40mm industrial rather than 40mm NBC. Hopefully, that's not too confusing. Um, so, the difference with industrial filters is they're probably going to be more practical for what you might want in some sort of survival scenario or, you know, shit hits the fan sort of thing. And the reason for that is. Um, if you get a full-on industrial filter, it's designed to protect you from anything that might be an industrial gas leak, and tear gas is easily filtered by those filters. So a full-on sort of industrial filter 
would protect you from everything like chlorine gas, phosgene that might be used as a chemical weapon, sort of the less serious ones. Obviously a new NBC filter would protect you from that as well. But they also have the um, ability to you know, filter lots more of the gases you're more likely to encounter, say in an industrial accident. If uh, you live near a factory and there was a fire and harmful gases came out, you could put one of those on and your lungs are completely fine while you escape. So and I would, if you are getting a mask for some sort of survival purpose, I would always get a full face mask so you have eye protection as well and not needing it separately. But there isn't anything stopping you from putting safety goggles on with one of these for eye protection. Um, so yeah, it's a lot more cool from, in many ways, getting an industrial mask. But as I said, that's not to say gas masks are useless. I think for a civilian, a gas mask is useless against nerve gas. But they have lots of other practical uses that you might not initially think of. Which is one of the reasons I think they're quite good to actually, you know, keep around. Um... Like I said, I've used NBC suits before, if you need to wade through flood water or sort of deep snow. Um, I've used an NBC suit before with a mask when I wanted to spray a wasp nest in the shed. Um, you know, and that meant I couldn't be stung because the wasp were just harmlessly trying to sting the suit. With NBC suits, you tend to either get rubberized one or activated charcoal ones. Activated charcoal ones have a uh, shorter shelf life. Um, so personally, I would recommend going with the rubber type ones that the Soviet Union used because it's nice thick rubber um, and while it's not comfortable at all to wear, if you're wearing it in deep snow that does the exact same job, it's like having a pair of waders with a very thick raincoat on basically. So there's that, as I said with a mask you want either an industrial one with uh, interchangeable filters uh, or a 40mm sort of gas mask that can take 40mm industrial filters. Another thing to note is industrial filters tend to be cheaper if you're buying them as surplus than um, NBC filters. The shelf life again will totally depend, but I think for most things you'd want protecting from as a civilian, or you at least have a hope of surviving from, industrial filters or newish NBC filters are the way to go. But like I said, industrial is more practical simply because of the things I think you might encounter there or filter. Also, you can get industrial filters, the high-grade ones, that will protect you from airborne viruses. Obviously, the NBC bit, the biological bit in um, a gas mask does that as well. But that's more intended for something like anthrax, whereas um, in industrial filter, you obviously have doctors that might be working with patients with an infection that could be quite serious. So if there was some sort of serious flu outbreak, you needed to go somewhere where you might be in contact with somebody, a full face mask with a 40mm industrial filter on that's good enough is a good idea. So, yeah, to sum it up, I would say that um, industrial filters are the way to go. I said either with a full face industrial mask where you can replace the filters. I can't replace them on this, but I didn't buy it for that. It's just going to be used as an example. But, you know, you actually want to think what might you come into contact with and what can you protect yourself against. And tear gas is easy to stop, so any sort of mask that takes a filter, you can put an industrial one on or an industrial mask will protect you from tear gas. And then as you go up threat levels, you really need to say what is going to be the utmost I'd be able to survive. You know, it's a bit like saying I could have all this stuff if a nuclear bomb was dropped on the city I live in, you're dead anyway, so there's no point. Um, but, you know, you want to look at practically what could you survive um, if you had the right equipment and what is a reasonable level and expense to go to. Because if you're going to follow military rules, you know, and get a mask that's within a 5 or 10 year lifespan, 20 years pushing it, it's going to be quite expensive to do that. I have some which were, were within 20 years, a couple of masks within 10 years, but I just get them as a collector. And... You know, with filters again, it can be quite hard as a civilian to try and buy NBC filters that are within their shelf life, because why would a civilian want that sort of thing? You know, questions might be asked. However, if you're buying industrial filters, lots and lots of tradesmen need those, so that's quite practical. So, I'll leave it at that. That's sort of what a gas mask can and can't protect you from. And, as again, saying about chemical suits, hopefully when I intercut those clips you could see how heavy and cumbersome a chemical suit is. They're not practical, but they can come in very useful. So, against nerve gas, I think as a civilian you're screwed. But against some of the lesser gases and industrial accidents or tear gas, um, a good full face industrial mask or, you know, older stock military mask with a good industrial filter on will protect you. So hopefully that's cleared up some questions people have been asking me 
And if you like this sort of stuff or into gas masks and other stuff, just subscribe and you'll see other, chan uh, other videos I do on this channel which are sort of related to that. Alright, hope everyone has a nice day. Thanks for watching.